The eight questions that get asked in every IB interview. Number one, could you introduce yourself? Yes, this one is quite obvious, but so many people get it wrong, and yet it is the most important. As an M&A analyst, I interviewed hundreds of candidates for internships, and after the first five minutes, nine out of ten, you can tell if the candidate will make it to the next round. For this question, I saw so many people get lost, stammer, or answer completely out of order. You have to prepare this question in advance and repeat it as many times as you are answering it when your stress is at its highest. Here are a few tips for this question. The first tip is to start by saying hello to the hiring team and thanking them for getting the opportunity to show your interest in the firm and the position. The second tip is to follow a chronological order when presenting yourself. It'll be easier for you and your interviewer won't get lost. The next tip is to talk about your educational background first and then talk about your experiences and show that all of these have brought you here today. This would look like this. I attended this college where I studied A and B. From that, I grew an interest in X, Y, and Z, and this is why I am here today to show you my interest in this job and in your company. The last tip is to conclude your introduction by restating your interest in the job. If your introduction is logical and chronological, it should end with something like this. On account of the skills I acquired through my past experiences and the interest I developed in the industry, I am highly motivated to learn by your side, and I am convinced that I will be a great addition to your team. One last point. Your answer should not exceed two minutes, or you will lose the audience's attention. Number two, are you aware of the hours? This question is used to test if the candidate is reliable and mentally balanced. If someone says that he is not ready to work long hours, then he's out. On the other side, if a candidate says that he likes working until 2 a.m. every day and on the weekends, this is a big red flag. In your answer, you should first say that you are well aware of the hours and that IB is a very demanding job. Reassure the interviewer by mentioning a period in the past when you worked really hard and say that working with bright people in a very demanding environment is actually an opportunity for you. The hours are the price to pay to learn a lot and have the chance to take part in unique transactions and you are more than ready to pay that price. Third question, why investment banking? This one is easy. It is for the salary and the prestige. Just kidding. I'm not sure this answer will help you, so here are my tips to best answer the question. You can mention the steep learning curve, say that the job is interesting because there is no routine as each deal is unique, highlight that the job is enriching as you can work on different industries, mention that the job evolves as the qualities required to be a great analyst are different than the ones required to be a good VP, which are in turn different from the ones required to become a great managing director. Mention your interest in acquiring technical knowledge like complex financial models, although if we are being honest, you won't touch any of that as an intern. You can also hint at exposure to large transactions, as it is rewarding to work on a transaction that could affect millions of people. For example, in one of my internships, I worked on a deal that was making the national news and it was quite thrilling. Number 4. Why this bank and not another one? This question is a way for the interviewer to see if you have done some research on the company and how well you know the industry. The best way to prepare this question is to speak to current employees to see how the bank differentiates itself and get testimonies from employees. I used to answer something like this. Besides having the chance of working on the largest transactions in, name the industries where they are the strongest, I had the opportunity to discuss with A, B, and C, and all of them insisted on X, W, and Z, which are essential to me. All of them learned a lot during their first month and gained exposure and responsibilities the more they proved their value. As I am very motivated and want to give my best, I strongly want to follow their path and support your team as much as they did. Number 5. What is the impact of a $10 increase in D&A? This is the most common accounting question. The interviewer wants to test your technical skills and if you have done your homework. Interviewers use accounting questions to sort candidates. If you fail, you're out. So take the time to understand how the three financial statements work and how they are linked together. To answer impact on financial statement questions, always start with the P&L, then the cash flow statement, then the balance sheet. You start with the P&L because it ends with the net income, which is at the top of the cash flow statement. And then at the end of the cash flow statement, you got the cash position, which goes into the balance sheet. 
For the $10 DNA impact, that would look like this. On the PL, $10 decrease in the EBIT and pre tax income, and $6 decrease in the net income since DNA are tax deductible expenses and assuming a 40% tax rate. On the cash flow statement in cash flow from operations, $6 decrease in the net income and a plus $10 in DNA since it is a non cash expense. No impact on investing and financing cash flows, which gives us a $4 increase in cash. On the balance sheet, $10 decrease in PP&E that got depreciated, and a $4 increase in cash, which gives us a $6 decrease in total assets. Then, in equity and liability, in the equity section we have a $6 decrease coming from the net income. In the end, total assets and total equity and liabilities decrease by $6. Sixth question, what are the three main valuation methods? The most common technical question is used to see if the candidate have done some preparation. This is a very basic question, but if you fail to answer, you're out. As a reminder, the three main valuation methods are the trading peers analysis, the precedent transaction method, and the DCF. No need to mention that you should be able to explain them. Number seven, are you interviewing elsewhere? Whatever your situation, you should say yes to this question and name two to three similar banks. Don't name Goldman if you are interviewing at a mid-cap boutique. It does not make any sense. By mentioning other banks, your value increases for the interviewers as it acts as social proof. If you feel confident and believe you aced the interview, you can ask when you can expect an answer from them as a competitor already made an offer and you have X days to give your response. Finish your answer by saying that all the other banks are great, but my first pick remains you, given the reasons you mentioned in why this bank and not another one. Number 8. Do you have any questions? This is the end of the interview. You gave everything, you're exhausted, and want to finish it. However, you should always answer yes to this question as you want to demonstrate your curiosity and interest in the job. Prepare at least two questions in advance, and you can think of another one based on the interviewer's presentation at the beginning of the interview. Be very specific in your question. Here are some suggestions. Do you have an onboarding process for newcomers? Do you have dedicated training for newcomers? What advice would you give to someone wanting to build a long career in IB? Once you prove your reliability, is it possible to learn financial modeling as an intern? What makes a great intern for you? Be ready to answer that question as well. That's it for today's video. I hope you found those tips useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so we can continue to help you. Good luck with your applications and see you soon.